Okay, picking up from our last few clips, I wanted to uh, do a little discussion and kind of clarify a few things. Um, you know, a couple clips ago, I stumbled a little bit when we were creating our initial uh, Hello Web, and we finally got it worked out, and um, I never did talk about exactly uh, what the cause of those problems were, but I think some of you may have noticed watching it. It basically was that our .ascx file did not have the correct uh, class name here, so the designer file was not updating correctly. So that was really the root problem, and then we changed the, the namespace here, and normally that would also correct itself in the designer file, uh, but, but again, because we didn't have the right uh, name here, it uh, didn't, didn't wire up correctly. So it went much easier when we actually created this one, the guestbook module, and we showed how to install that using the setup system. There's more to the setup system that we'll be covering uh, in future clips, including uh, running SQL scripts and creating your table and creating stored procedures and that kind of thing. But I wanted to mention all that real quickly. Now the other thing I think it would be useful to talk about at this point is how does how does the content management system work and you know why does a features entry point you know really want to be a control rather than a page? When we create pages in the site we're not creating physical .aspx pages. When we created the new page test, we're just creating a record in the database. Every page in the menu is served from default.aspx, really. You know, and that's kind of the default document, so you can even chop that off, and it still serves default.aspx. If you click on the actual link in the menu, it'll use its home.aspx. Now, these, this is really like uh, a search engine issue, but this URL would be the canonical URL. It's if, you, if you view the source of the page, we put a link in there so that search engines know that's the official URL. You could override that and just chop it off and have the root URL without home.aspx as your canonical. And that's useful mainly on the home page. Other pages, you pretty much do want the, the name of the page the, to have the, you know, that URL. will be There'll only be one URL for other pages because they're not the default page. Now, what makes the home page, the default page, just is the very fact that it's the uh, root level page with the lowest sort order. If we wanted to change and make the test page the home page, we could go into administration and we could go to the add edit pages and we just move it up. And now it is the home page. It's just the first page in the site. Okay, so the page itself doesn't know it's the home page, it just knows it's a page. So there's really no difference between the home page and any other page. They're all served by default.aspx. And how that works is we map the friendly URL to the real URL. Let me go ahead and put this back now. We've just shown that any page could be the home page and you could move any page in your site to the home position. Um, but how it really works is that we have uh, friendly URLs are created and really Every page is served by default.aspx question mark page ID equals whatever the page ID is. So we map, we create friendly URLs that map to those, and those URLs you can actually see them. If you go into URL Manager, and you can see that home maps to default.aspx page ID equals zero, and test maps to default.aspx page ID equals one. So that's you know, the default.aspx page is serving all of what we call the CMS pages, and those are the pages in the menu. And so your feature is really just something that plugs into a page as a concept. And so when we see, okay, we loaded page one, the system has a record of every feature that's installed each module instance on that page, and it loads those controls up for you. So that's why a, a control is kind of the entry point of a feature. A lot of you know times you need more than just that. Some features are complete with just that control, like you know these uh, contact form or something like that. Although we have extra page for viewing the messages. But uh, a lot of times with a more complicated feature, you need supporting pages. And a good example of that would be our forums. If you look at forums.aspx on mojoportal.com, now <clears throat> what we see here is the forum module control. And all it is is a list of the forums themselves with links to other supporting pages. We're going to be learning how to add supporting pages in our guestbook feature, but this is a good one to look at to see how it works. So. As soon as we click one of these links, we're no longer on this CMS page called Forms. But if you mouse over the link, you'll see that we're passing the page ID. If you look in the status bar here, when I mouse over it, 
page ID 5, module ID 34, item ID 2. Item ID is which form, because you can see we can have multiple forms within a single form instance. Uh, you can just create as many forms as you want, actually. And so the module ID is what ties them all together as one instance. That's the instance ID. And then the page ID is the page that the feature is on. And all of these things are very important to pass into your supporting pages. Um, you know, item ID is specific to the form, but you always have to pass page ID and module ID to your supporting pages in order to enforce security. Because remember, our view permissions are both at the page level and the module level. A person can't view uh, a page if they don't have view permissions on the page. And then a module can also have permissions on it. Now, if a module is on a page and the user is in a role that has permission to see the module but not the page, then they can't see it unless it's on, a, unless it's on another page as well uh, that where they do have permission. So it gives us an opportunity to have some things on a page that some people can see and some things on a page that people can't see. Uh, but typically, those view roles are going to be the same. Uh, if you make it a public page, that means all users can see that page, and all, you're going to pretty much have all users on the module too, unless you've got some strange reason for doing it different. But in any case, that is how it is. There's some helper methods in our base page, and there's some helper methods in our um, module that help us enforce security. And those require us passing the module ID and the page ID. Now, of course, those are query string parameters, they can be manipulated so that security logic makes sure that that module actually exists on the page and you know you can't just uh, manipulate and, and bypass the security. We, we validate that those are correct combination. But so okay back to the forms we click the report bugs and now we're on this page here. It's not a CMS page but you notice that the menu stays highlighted and that's also a result of the fact that we pass in the page ID so the menu still knows what the kind of current page is. Even though we're not on the page, there's still a page associated with this form. And so the menu stays aligned with that too. And so now that's our first supporting page is formview.aspx. And that shows the threads for a particular form. Um, and then it's, it's paged, so you know you can navigate through the pages and then we get extra page number parameter. But pretty much we're always maintaining module ID, page ID, in, in the form case, item two, that means the bug form. So then when, you know, if we click a thread, we go to yet another, uh, yet another page, and this one is thread.aspx in the forms folder. And it, all the time we're still passing page ID, the module ID, the item ID, and now we've additionally passed this thread ID. And so that shows the posts in this thread. And then, of course, if you sign into the forms, then you get a link here to make a post to the forms, and then you'd go to forms edit post.aspx. And again, always the page ID and module ID is passed in. So by using a Mojo base page as our page and using the same you know, master page structures, uh, we create our supporting pages, and they look and blend in just fine with all the CMS pages. And the menu stays highlighted, and it's a seamless experience going from the CMS page to the supporting pages. And that's really the goal that we're trying to do at the end. Okay, that's uh, nine and a half minutes. I'm trying to keep these clips to 10 minutes or less, so it's a good point to stop. We'll see you in the next clip.